This NFL DFS Week One Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by the SGPN Free Roll Football Contest. Join our free season-long pick'em with up to three thousand dollars in prizes and a Super Bowl autographed SGP helmet up for grabs. Sign up link in the SGPN app. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use promo code SGPN on your first purchase to save twenty dollars. Download the Game Time app and use promo code SGPN. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play the Underdog Pick'em in college or NFL. Went up to twenty times in one game. Use promo code SGPN Underdog Fantasy for a hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. We're also brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code SGP. New customers can score two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly when they bet just five dollars on any NFL bet. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SG. P. What's up? It's the most must see WWE superstar of all time, The Miz, and you are watching SGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Live action is really happening. Now I, I know I said it with college last week, yeah. but holy shit, it's here. It, it's Ooh. great to ease into the football season. We have college football week zero, which is kind of like a, is, is that easing? Yeah, it's it's all right. Gus Johnson losing his mind. Gus Johnson did lose his mind. That's it was not easy. It was week zero, and then week <laughs> one, uh, insane week one, hit some major uh, money line dogs. It was uh, it was a oh, great kinda, start. Kind of like college. showing up to college and uh, scoring that first weekend, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, sir. Hopefully, it doesn't go downhill. For, You're like, for it you, can't right? be this easy. It can't be this easy, Duke. Uh, we're we're taping this right after uh, the Duke game. Duke just beat Clemson. <laughs> what the fuck is going as a on? home dog. Basketball I, in September. I, I I get. I like Duke. I regret not doing a round robin money line parlay with the uh, Colorado Buffaloes and the you know Wyoming Cowboys. I mean, Colby and I just gave out uh, Colorado and Wyoming parlay together. But I also like Duke. I, I mean, it's crazy. New rule. All right. All the stuff we did deep into the summer, I felt like I was on point. The stuff that I, I uh, as I did more prep and listen to more voices, <laughs> horrible. Ryan, you can't horrible. you can't listen to the outside voices. You gotta horrible. stay locked in. And I think it's Drew Aller. We're gonna have to talk about this in the college show, but I do think we might have gotten that one wrong, amongst others. What do you mean? Uh, the pronunciation of his name. Oh, okay. I thought I was gonna say they they look good oh, and what do you baby Josh Allen? Are you Penn kidding me? State Penn State with the beautiful beautiful backdoor and uh, not even a back. I don't even know what you would call it. They could have kneeled down. They put it in the end zone. No, that's and a front the door. Twenty cover. and a half. I saw people calling it a back door. Co- that's a front door cover. Yeah, that's kicking down the front door. That's you saying I'm aware, <laughs> and we want to get this record to one and zero straight up and against the spread. Ryan, uh, it, it's yes. awesome. We are officially kicking off our NFL football schedule of podcasts and content, and what better way to do it than the announcement of the. NFL free roll football contest. Is the NFL pick em contest free? Yes. Can you win thousands of dollars in prizes? Yes. First off, $1,000 uh, to first place, $500 to second place. But if you're a Patreon member for the NFL season, that prize doubles to $2,000 for first, $1,000 for second. And if a Patreon member wins, uh, that's a college football contest we got up there. Uh, if a Patreon member wins this uh, this uh, autographed sports game on podcast no. helmet that I'm pointing to right here, Ryan, we got Bill Romanowski, Eric Metcalf, Pac-Man Jones, fellow media member Pac-Man Jones. Yeah, from the uh, Pat McAfee show. A you- Oreo lover Joe Theismann, <laughs> noted vanilla Oreo lover Joe Theismann, all could be yours. Again, get in on the Patreon, sportsgivenpodcast.com slash Patreon. And of course, sign up for the uh, free roll football contest. The link 
is in the SGPN app. You should have the SGPN app. Again, all the free picks, podcasts, all in one place. And once again, how many times have I said free ride? A, a bunch. Seems like you keep saying it. I keep saying free. Yeah, fe- for little, good reason. Little feedback. Well, you saying free a lot? <laughs> might be your sa- might sound repetitive. Oh, and right into Oh my gosh. <laughs> pew pew pew. Right into more. More free stuff, including some sweet bonus bets. Use the promo code SGP over in the DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, of course, we're gonna be pulling all our spreads bets this week on the NFL. Odds courtesy of the DraftKings Sportsbook. Oh man, that that Steelers 49ers game, Ryan. Now it Kittle sounds like he's not gonna play. Bosa may hold out Pussy. to the point where he doesn't play. Good thing we gave it out in our way too early uh, week one. I think we gave out Steelers plus three and a half. That number is dropping left and right. I'm I'm worried too many people are on the Steelers now. Hey. You know what? I'm not worried about too many people getting on DraftKings. Download now and use code SGP. Sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code SGP. Only on the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting part of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambling. DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. Kramer, so much going on. Uh, D. Bettis in the chat saying, "I I won twenty eight hundred dollars this weekend." How do you yes, do that? Sir. He had something to do with your parlay. Yeah, uh, maybe. Have people been thanking you? Yes, got a number of sh- uh, shout outs. Got a compliments to the chef with the sweet like chef's kiss emoji, Ryan. Ooh, and that sounds fancy. And I wouldn't and have known it if I saw it. NFL Week One DFS, Ryan. I remember it well. We were in my garage. As six years ago, 2017, what? where I gave out on air a lineup that came in second place. Of course, um, you know, fuck you, Scott Tolzien, for costing me, uh, for uh, essentially whoa, owing me eight hundred thousand yeah, dollars. He's part of the story, though. He's part of the folklore of SGP. If you've never seen the video, YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast, thought it would be fun to bring it back because I. I I randomly uh, rewatched the the reaction video of me reacting to winning 200 grand, and in it uh, we also talk about DraftKings promo code SGP. Uh, so going full circle. Your partner, 200 fucking grand. Eat it, DraftKings <laughs> promo code SGP. CTA <laughs> important. Oh my god, I'm having a heart attack. How do you process this? Right, let's go. Let's walk. We gotta move. So. Oh, you did that. Look at that. No, dude. <laughs> it doesn't feel real right now. I need, I need like a cup of coffee or something. Two hundred fucking grand. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> well, just me pacing around the hotel room. Ryan's oh, there. My buddy Justin. No I'm picking up my phone. I'm double checking that no I did. I, I'm still in second place. <laughs> waiting for some stat correction. You trying to get me to drive, like, drive you home at like one in the morning, in from Vegas on Sunday night was all time. Yes, I was. I, I kept, all time. I kept telling Ryan. I'm like Ryan. Please drive me home. I, I'm worried that something really bad is gonna happen. I, I gotta. I, I just didn't. Uh, it just something. I, I had 200k in the account, and I just I just felt like it was gonna go somewhere or something. I had to get home and and safely. Yeah, I mean, store honestly, it. after learning uh, six more years of data on how <laughs> you operate, that must have been a tremendously difficult time for you. What do you mean? Well, the time before it hit the bank account, I would imagine there was a lot of refreshes of the email. Oh, yes, a lot of the bank account being logged into refresh, refresh. I remember refresh. I was in, I was in a uh, in a office meeting uh, with um, when I was still a TV writer, and I was just refreshing my Bank of America <laughs> account, and it was like it was twenty three hundred dollars, and then all of a sudden one refresh, two hundred. And two thousand three hundred dollars, and it was uh, it was awesome. Got the truck, got a four hundred one k. It was uh, it was a great day. <laughs> uh, it really was. It was pretty awesome, pretty badass. Love how you came out of it with a four hundred one k. No, you got you got to get the four hundred one k, Ryan. So yeah, the no, government right. can't take all your money. All right. <laughs> so what would a rich guy do, Sean? Always exactly. Like do what the rich guy would yeah. do. 
parlay Wyoming and <laughs> Colorado on the money line. I mean, rich I, guys would do that. I mean, why not, right? Well, hopefully some poor guys did that. Now yes. they're rich guys. Hopefully poor guys got to rich it. Rich guy, poor guy. What was the name of that book? <laughs> that feels like a, be, a, a a segment coming up. All right. What do you want to do now? Well, Ryan, uh, we got a guest coming on because yes. we're going to break down our week one DFS lineups. Oh. Probably a good time to talk uh, just overall draft strategy. If you're new to the show, uh, we give out uh, our weekly millionaire maker lineups. Again, trying to win a million dollars. So you're trying to find uh. that balance. All right, Ryan. Um, you're trying to find that balance of so something that's you know a little contrary and not too crazy, but that can still hit, right? I mean, you want to? I, I will say, uh, try to avoid getting too weird. I pulled open some lineups of, I've already created from early in the earlier in the summer, and it's like, all right, that's uh, I, you don't have to get. What too, would you? What would you? Uh, what Donald lineups? Parham. Okay. <laughs> uh, too much exposure to Donald Parham in the in the DFS streets, I would say. Well, they, it's it's really annoying because we're going to be out in oh, Vegas. It's the worst time of the year. Flying out tomorrow, and it's really annoying because there's a number of guys I kind of like, uh, in in particular Mike Evans, Cooper Cup. We don't know, you know, taping this now on a Monday night, you don't know where they're going to shake out as far no. as and in. Nevada, unfortunately, they don't have DraftKings DFS, so you can't adjust your lineups. Um, so I'll have to figure out some workarounds, <laughs> or just I, I I went through and I pulled Mike Evans out of my lineups. Uh, it seems like there's a contract thing, a groin thing. I think he probably plays, but and then Cooper Cup reaggravated his hamstring. He's seeing a specialist in Minnesota. Not necessarily a a great sign for him there. Yeah, no, I there's nothing worse than trying to explain to the wife how to swap, do a late swap. Uh all right, so here's what I need you to do. Go <laughs> in and open the lineup that has this guy. And that see what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out Cooper Cup and we're gonna put in Ben Scournick. Who? <laughs> yeah, scroll down. Oh yeah, I don't have any I don't have any uh Skoranek. Oh, I got to get me some Skoranek. Although Just stay tuned for the prop show. Sean's going to oh, be all over, all over Ben, ben Skoranek. All over Ben Skoranek. Well, Ryan, all, just a couple like big picture strategies. Yeah. Stacking is obviously huge. You want to play is your quarterback it? with um you got to stack. Game stack. Is quarterback stacking still important? I, I think to I think to a degree. Again, I'm kind of moved over to just single stacking. I know some places will say it, the best strategy is to play you know, the, the quarterback with two of receivers from that team and maybe a bring back from that same team. I like going quarterback, one receiver, and mm. then one receiver on the opposing team. Yeah. I know you mentioned that. I think, yeah, the double stack was the profit was the plus EV approach. Obviously you got a zag though, right? If everyone's doing the same thing. Yeah. I'd imagine that we'll look back at the data this year or maybe even last year and say double stacking maybe wasn't hypercritical. So I do think game stacking though. We were discussing this because the single stack opens up an additional game stack where yeah. you're just stacking two players from the same game. And I, in some ways, I think that maybe that I'm learning this from best ball game stacking greater than quarterback stacking. Trevor in the YouTube chat saying, I'm feeling like Sean is going to have a two on lineup. <laughs> I do have a tool lineup, uh, but I'm I won't give out the tool lineup on this show uh, because I I think again what's sweet about um, DraftKings, especially Week One DFS, the Millie Makers they they do for five dollars. Yeah. Normally the entry fees are twenty dollars, so it's super fun to just blast off, rip off a, a ton of these, and I I do try and find or do try and put together a lineup for each starting quarterback. Usually, I don't include the Dallas Cowboys, but they're playing the Sunday night game, which uh, obviously not included in the slate. Yeah, I was going to say they hooked you up this year. Yes, they did. All right. Well, I mean, where you want to? Our guest is here, Sean. So we All can, right. We well, can. Uh, well, yeah. And, and the, I, here's one other thing I would say. One other thing is, it, it's going to sound fucking stupid, but don't don't pick the obvious guys. There don't, is a certain element of like, don't take the guys that ever, like, oh, this guy is four thousand. Free square. Uh, it does. I, I mean, I, again, when Sean played his lineup, he didn't. He might. Did you have any free squares? I, I don't know if we ever went back and looked at it. Uh, I'm going to guess Tariq Cohen wasn't a free square. No, Tariq Cohen point. very under uh, under uh, underplay. I'm going to guess the Carson Wentz double maybe wasn't super popular. Whatever he had, was it a single? I I just I wonder if uh, don't don't pick the obvious guy. Correlate the do do some uh, do correlation. 
whether it's running back defense, whether it's uh player player. Real Duke quick, Ryan, for my official lineup, I had <laughs> uh Carson Wentz. Yeah, he definitely wasn't gonna be popular. LaShawn McCoy. Oh wow. Theo Riddick. Remember and, him? Yeah, Antonio Brown, Amari Cooper. Were you- uh, wasn't on the Cowboys then. DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Ertz. That was my stack. Tree Cohen, and then Philly defense. Did oh, so you you stacked the defense? Yes, with, that's interesting. And because they had gotten defensive Almost. touchdowns against Kirk Cousins yeah. previously, yeah, that makes sense. And they got one more. All right, Ryan. Before we bring out our guest, shout out to Game Time. Use that promo code SGPN. Get twenty dollars off when you sign up to get tickets through the Game Time app. I uh, I'm going to be just. Getting a ton of tickets for the Eagles Rams game. A lot of people are waiting to the last minute. Hey, am I going to go? Am I not going to go? It's great to have game time in your back pocket because you know you're going to get the best price. There's nothing worse than getting going to an event and then the whole time you're thinking, like, oh my God, I got murdered. I overpaid. This was stupid. Game time's great. The low price guarantee. If you can find uh, tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So don't even bother trying because you cannot uh, beat their price. And again, not obviously NFL, but they also got you covered for basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater. Take the take the lady Ooh. out uh, to a night of theater before you go into your NFL cave. So many, uh, so many great opportunities. And again, Eagles Rams, I'm going to be all over it. Download the game time app, create an account, use code SGPN for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, uh, promo code SGPN with the game time app. Well done, Sean. And I, yeah, I I'm scouring uh, for some tickets out in Vegas, family friendly oh. section. If anyone has a recommendation. <laughs> Uh, Th- thinking about taking the children to Vegas, which already seems like a horrible idea, but I'm the wife seems interested. Do they so still have circus circus? Uh, yeah, I'm no, I'm not worried about <laughs> staying somewhere. I'm more worried about like the dealing with uh, I, the 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 Michaels crowd, the folks Raiders. who go and get their styrofoam balls and put on their mascara and get mean at the game. All right, should we bring on? Yes, joining us on the line, oh. Mr. John Jackson. What's happening, John? What's up? What's up, people? How are we doing? Football. Yes. It's football season. I feel like my head is huge here. Yeah, that's all right. It's all right. Yeah, we're just we're just resizing things, getting it getting it dialed in, getting ready to go. No, for I mean football. it's a nice head. I also have a large head. <laughs> I've got a I've got a weird setup. I'm getting new carpets tomorrow, so I got like a pile of laundry behind me that's like from all the car- all the closets in the house. So DFS sharp. So John, <laughs> what uh before we get into your lineup, uh, uh always fun to talk big picture stuff. What are some like overall strategies to winning a big tournament like the the Millie Maker or just in general with your DFS approach? Yeah, I mean, I think um I think you guys are touching on it. You know, I think the correlation is super important. Um and I would, I I still think that uh, double stacks are kind of the way to go. Mm. Um, Take that, Sean. (laughs) Little, (laughs) and I think uh, definitely bring back to getting the bring backs in there. And then, I mean, I also am a pretty big fan of secondary stacks as well. Just grabbing a, you know, call it a two players from the same game and not really worrying too much about the quarterback. I mean, all of the, the, the concept is basically just trying to get the least amount of things right as possible. Right. So if you can get into two games that just go off and you've got four or five players in your lineup from those two games, uh, then you're going to be doing pretty well. And, and I think the last piece I think is important for people to think through is like, so, so understanding ownership is good. Right. And trying to figure out like, you know, staying away from the chalk or how to get leverage off of the chalk. Um, but also the product ownership, which is like basically if you were to kind of multiply all your ownerships together, right? So if you've got three guys that are 20% owned, you know, that's going to sum up to, you know, 60%. But if you've got a guy that's 30, um, you know, a guy that's 25, and then a guy that's 5% owned, like that 5% owned guy is going to make you so much more different than, you know, the the lineup that has all the 20% guys. And so just trying to fit a couple of the lower owned guys in there. Um, and if they can combo out to also be like leverage plays uh, is really what, what I'm kind of looking for. Well, let's, let's start it off there because I have a guy that I imagine 
would be coming in at five percent ownership uh, allows me to get uh, e- eat a bunch of chalk later on, or, or get some higher owned guys. I'm sure some of these uh, plays, but I'm doing it. I woke up feeling dangerous. Give me Baker Mayfield, forty nine hundred dollars at the Minnesota Vikings. It's a dome. I think there's a <laughs> there's a world where this game gets to be a shootout. Yes. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna let Baker throw the ball because why not? I I, I don't think it's gonna be a Rashad White pound the rock game. I think Tampa Bay has some issues on defense. I think the Minnesota Vikings have issues on defense. I, I think the other pass catchers on the Minnesota side are very interesting to bring back with. Uh very interesting stacking opportunities. So yeah, give me Baker Mayfield forty nine hundred dollars. Which is comically low for a quarterback. Can Usually, you, I don't give me, give me some guys in the range, Sean. Give me who is someone is what's Trey Lance's price, just for <laughs> reference. Uh, Trey Lance, who will not be playing, he oh, is. Are we sure about that? He's listed as out. He's forty seven hundred dollars. Oh, right. So That's if you not just even on the slate, I spend up two hundred dollars from <laughs> Trey Lance. I mean Desmond Ritter, uh, who I'm sure Ryan, you oh. have some Desmond Ritter lineups. He's 4,900. I, I, sh- I shamefully, I do not have a Desmond River. And Ritter you could lineup. talk me, you could talk me into that. I, I like to avoid, uh, I like to avoid division games for like my main stack. I don't know, I don't know if the number. It's one of your pillars. I don't know if the numbers <laughs> play it out, but I feel like division teams. Division teams know each other, so they, I, I, I like, I, I feel like it doesn't end up being a high score. A shootout game. Although you know, I I can recall some like Bengals Browns game that ended up shooting out. Obviously, Chargers uh, have certainly been involved in some shootouts. So I, I'm going Baker Mayfield. Forty nine hundred dollars gives me a ton of uh of of cash to spend elsewhere. But Ryan, what are you doing? Who's your quarterback? Well, again, like much like you, these five dollar bullets. You just you're just making lineups. Yes. I, again, like. I maxed uh, best ball mania. So now I have nothing to do with all my time. And so I'm, I'm firing off, uh, figuring out how, ways to, to play more Sam Howell lineups. And don't worry. Okay. I, I will tweet out a number of uh, Jalen hurts lineups. Okay. I was worried. <laughs> uh, I think the fans were too. They probably all tuned in to hear their, what, what's my Jalen hurts lineup going to be this week. Kenny Pickett. Uh, uh, this is maybe one of the most Ooh. frustrating off season takes we were so hard up on Pittsburgh back when we did the way too early week one. Oh, was, everyone's gotten, it gotten around. And yeah, now it seems like the the slippery slope of what we saw in Kenny Pickett preseason happened. Uh, the 49ers injury problems are already starting to happen. So yeah, I mean, Kenny Pickett, 5,200, not much above your kind of massive dart throw. Feels like less of a dart throw here. I know San Francisco has had a good defense under D'Amico Ryan's, no longer there. A leader of men, Steve Wilkes is there, but obviously if Bose is not playing, yeah, that's a different, totally defense. different defense. So pick it fifty two hundred also provides some some fun stacking, uh, cheaper stacking options. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, John, what do you got? Who's your quarterback? I like I like the picket call. I feel like there's going to be some. I feel like there's the Steelers yes. are going to be a popular team this uh, <laughs> from from the, both a betting and a DFS standpoint, but. I've I've been banging the table for this guy all summer, and I'm just gonna roll him out week one. We're gonna go Anthony Richardson, yeah. fifty six hundred. <laughs> Love He's, it. He is gonna. I like. I can guarantee. I haven't you know st- stared at projections and stuff like that. I guarantee he's gonna be a great value this week. I guarantee <laughs> nobody's gonna play him because people think he can't throw or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I think <laughs> it's I think it's gonna work out well. No, I mean again, uh, in in normal football, <laughs> not being able to throw holds you back. But in DFS, yeah, exactly. come on, yeah, he's the goal line back. I love Anthony Richardson. I think we don't need to win games here. We just need to yes. score fantasy points. And, and especially with Jonathan Taylor being uh. out, they're gonna give him any. And if they get inside the ten yard line, it's just gonna be Anthony Richardson runs. I mean, if you watch him in the preseason, like he is a big dude don't sleep that on gets him. downhill. Um, Don't sleep on Evan Hull. Maybe nah, Evan Hull. Look, I I love this. I I'm I, excited. I like I like Anthony Richardson <laughs> a ton in DFS. Uh, I I can't wait to get some more lineups uh, going with him. It'll be interesting. I mean, so you, the guy's got a the the guy's like built like Derrick Henry, and he's yeah. quarterback, and he's like it's he two sixty five. Yeah, he's got a RAS score of a perfect ten uh, when you compare to quarterbacks. And then he's still got like a 10 when you compare it to all like receivers. And I think he's still a 10 when you compare him to linebackers. It's like, dude, 
like I don't care. He's not Trey Lance. He is gonna be better than Trey Lance. I don't really care what you say. Uh, yes, I, this is. I. I mean. It, this, if he's so much bigger than Trey Lance the, and like looks to initiate contact. I don't know if it's going to be a great, like long-term thing to have a quarterback low in his shoulder, like Ironhead Hayward, but in the short term, it's going to be, you fun. know what though? I will say the shade I would throw is I would love to have seen him run like cam Newton in college. Mm. Uh, yeah. I will say you, you dive a little too deep in some of those uh, escapability metrics and it's like, huh? I wonder if his brain is just not all the way there, but I, you know, I understand the case. I'll, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'll be complicit. No, and, and, and so, and so John, that's interesting. You think he won't catch a ton of ownership. I, again, I'm never good at Kramer and I keep going back and forth. Like, wait, do you think he's going to be owned a ton? And I get in my head with that. So I just ultimately just go with my gut on this shit, but you, you don't think I he's going to catch. Well, I don't know. I, I, so it's, Week one's always interesting because I think yeah. week one is always spread out and people come in with their opinions from summer and everything. And now, especially with all the best ball stuff, like people have just been hammering drafts forever now. So people have an idea of like what's going on. And so I think things will get pretty spread out. And I think if like with him not having any games under his belt, that's going to lead to like a little bit of a tempered ownership, even if he's like, jumping off the page is like a pretty good value at whatever he's going to be out 5,600. All right. For me, first running back, uh, give it to me. Give me cam acres, $6,200 at the Seattle Seahawks, especially if Cooper cups out and it, and it looks like he's going to be out. They got to do something on offense. And I think they're able to run on this Seahawks team. I mean, the last game the Rams played, it was at Seattle. It was an ugly 19 to 16 loss for the Rams, but Cam Akers, 21 uh, carries, 104 yards, three catches on three targets. The game before that against Seattle at home, he was 17 for 60, but he got two touchdowns. I think they just don't have a lot going on. I think Cam Akers is in a good position, especially with Cooper Cup probably out. I, I maybe Tyler Higby ends up getting uh, super popular, but I like Cam Akers in this spot. And I, I still don't think Seattle has, has completely fixed their run defense. So, yeah, give me Cam Akers, 6,200. Uh, I ended up with more, you know, Cam Akers is an interesting guy this year because it doesn't seem like there's a ton uh, there. Uh, they were the bring back for the Giants, so all summer I've been finding creative <laughs> ways to put Rams on my team. And you're like, uh, Kyron Williams, like, uh, they just, yeah. So Cam Akers could have a massive. I mean, that team he also could get. Could I, just, I wouldn't be surprised if he got like 25, 30 touches and at that price, I, I'm in on it. I mean, John, what do you think of uh, Cam Akers this week? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a great week to roll him out. I think there's definitely a bit of a concern that he's, I, in my opinion, I think there's a bit of a concern that he's not going to be like a stud for the rest of the year. But um, I mean, he's, mm -hmm. you know, he's great this week. You, like you said, no cup. Um, and this, I think this is a, a good week to load up on him. Yeah, he could. Well, that, he that could. Was, that was a little. That was not. That was like a little lukewarm <laughs> at best. Uh, he could fall off a cliff as the season goes on. I I agree, but uh, Florida State riding high right now. They're back. Kramer, who's your first running back? Oh, Christian McCaffrey. Wait, oh, really? What, what do okay. we discuss all the time? Christian McCaffrey should be ten thousand dollars. Christian McCaffrey's not ten thousand dollars. Pull the ripcord on Christian McCaffrey. Then we sprinkle in that oh, Kittle. Uh, he's dealing with a thing. Uh, is it groin? Is it gambling? <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out. Uh, I, I, I think, I think I would imagine some folks will see the Pittsburgh secondary and say, "Hey, this is maybe they'll get cute with Debo or, or Ayuk." And so I'm not going to get cute. 8,700 discount for McCaffrey. I, wh why is he not going to be heavily involved in this game plan? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I guess I would just say the 49ers have kind of gone out of their way to be to say stuff like, Hey, we want to keep him healthy for the yeah. whole year. We want to see what, uh, you know, we like Elijah Mitchell, although he's dealing with that abductor, uh, abductor strain. I don't know where he's at with it. To your point, Kittle's also banged up. It kind of limits their options. Uh, you know, maybe he's on some sort of pitch count. I think is maybe your only counter and huh. Pittsburgh does have a good defense. Might but be the healthiest guy on the team. That's true. <laughs> John, who do you got? Who's your first running back? Uh, so I'm going a, a little bit of a Homer pick here and I'm going with Aaron Jones. <laughs> oh, against the nice. Bears. I, uh, I just like to kind of take some guys who have scored like 40 DK points before and, and Aaron Jones <laughs> is one of those guys. And, uh, 
I think the uh, Bears are uh, pretty fraudulent this year. And uh, I don't know. I think I just think the Packers are a uh, slept great. on team. And uh, I could see Aaron Jones coming out and just just house it a couple touchdowns against the Bears. I will say his one. his price is very, it's very easy to put him in there, stack him. I mean, stacking him with the Packers defense. I don't want to jump ahead to the everyone's favorite part of the show, but <laughs> they 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 do provide leverage off the Commanders, who I think will be a very popular defensive play. This it's yeah, it's very. I mean, you also heard the coaches talk about how Aaron Jones is going to be a superstar. You don't say that unless maybe maybe we uh, debut a nice three touchdown bet. Uh, live I mean, from Vegas on Aaron Jones. You don't Bring need it back a, to you, where it started. Remember you don't that? need to sell Ryan on Aaron Jones. He is just <laughs> he's rock hard over here right. talking about Aaron Jones. Yeah, it, it it's a good spot uh, of the division games. I I do think that one is kind of uh, interesting as far as both sides being able to to move the ball on each other and especially like the Packers run defense. Um, yeah, that one's going to be interesting. For me, I'm keeping it Homer as well. I I don't understand why he's priced this low. I think there's a chance he's he's the uh, leading. Uh, he has the most touches at the running back position with an amazing offensive line. Give me Kenny Gainwell, forty two hundred dollars at the New England Ooh, Patriots. Spicy. I I I don't think he's going to catch much ownership at all. I think he could out touch DeAndre Swift pretty easily. I have it on good authority. He's their two minute back, and I think if they're and they like him near the goal line. I mean, you remember from the Super Bowl, I had Kenny Gainwell like thirty to one first touchdown. He basically scored it, but then they uh, reversed it. And then uh, Jalen hurts obviously is going to get a ton of that, but they trust Kenny Gainwell. I don't think they trust Deandre Swift yet. They don't trust Rashad Penny. I think in any tight spots, he's getting it. And I do think there's going to be slightly more passing into the running backs for the Eagles. So yeah, give me Kenny Gainwell, 4,200. Kramer, who's your second running back? I couldn't pull the trigger on Kenny Gainwell uh, like it. That that might be your two hundred. I'm telling you, Kenny Gainwell is this year's Tariq Cohen. Oh, okay. I'm calling my shot. All right. Well, uh, I not not a Tariq Cohen, but certainly makes you look super smart if you were drafting with some zero RB and you took Raheem Mostert. Because guess what, Raheem Mostert has become a very very. I mean, I I guess A Chain is A Chain is on his way back, but Mostert is going to be the guy as long as he gets hurt. It doesn't get hurt, which. We'll say what two to three weeks. Maybe he maybe he can go the full. Four. That's why Jeff Wilson's on the IR. Maybe keep him fresh for when Mostert gets hurt. But this week, fifty four hundred against the Chargers, who part of their strategy is letting teams run the ball against them. Yeah, weapons all over the field for Miami. I, I Mostert seems like a, a fun guy who can accidentally be a two touchdown scorer. And you know, if he if he led running backs in points week one, would you be surprised? Just because I mean, no, not at all. I, I mean, have no, I have no idea if someone's gonna scrut like steal carries around the goal line or anything like that. But man, big yeah. play guy. Yeah, Se- seems like a good opportunity. Fifty four hundred. Uh, I'm assuming he'll be a little chalky, but I wanted to get into no. this game. I was always gonna stack this game, and so Mostert was a. He also was the guy that stood out as like a bring back for the Herbert stacks. Um, yeah. But he'll, yeah, this will be, be a popular. popular game for sure. I think Chargers, Chargers, uh, Dolphins will be the most popular game. I mean, it's got the biggest total of the slate. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see a Shane, a Shane or whatever versus Mostert. Um, what their kind of projected ownership is looking like, and but I think rolling with Mostert in Week One makes most sense. Yeah, they seem kind of, uh, I wouldn't say out on a chain, but like. Like he was never in danger of not making the team, but they didn't seem super high on him. Like he was running, yeah. He was like doing punt mm. gunner stuff. Like he didn't seem like he was super high with. Don't the, say this around the dynasty people. They'll <laughs> get very angry. No, I mean I think maybe later on the season maybe he gets some more run. Dude, uh, we hear about this all the time with these Texas A and M cats mm. that they're like just shit. They they don't uh, some don't adjust well to the NFL coaching. Who knows what kind of loose ass shit's going on down there? We well, were down there. Lots of parades. Yeah. Lots of pageants and pageantry. I mean, it, it's different place. John, who do you who do you got? Second running back. So I'm going uh a, a little bit of a leverage play against I think a game that may be kind of popular. Um, so I'm going with Joe Mixon, sixty eight hundred. Um, I I feel like Burrow stacks are 
may be popular they may not also though because like he's probably got a q tag on the app right now um you know seeing if he's gonna play or not but i think if there's some late news that he will play then i feel like people you know are, are like confidently that he will play then then people may load up some burrow but you know even if he, I, i'm assuming burrow's playing but even if he you know he does play i i do think the Bengals have notoriously kind of slow rolled him in off of injuries right and so a couple more check downs and mix in a, a little bit more work early on for him um i think could make a lot of sense yeah and you talk about guys who put up 40 dk points of That's course right. uh mix in with that insane game against the panthers 153 rushing four touchdowns so you get another performance i mean obviously that's what you're chasing but yeah. uh he's seen and it's a system play well, uh, I mean, anyone it, who's been uh found not guilty of aggravated menacing yeah. you have to play him right. that next week it's just it's just it's system uh, play not only that but i mean you you go deeper i mean it's just why wouldn't you th- this is a car it's maybe you, you, the lease is up you got plenty of miles so why not just run this bitch into the ground yeah i like <laughs> i like joe mixon uh for me I'm playing this Tampa Bay uh, Vikings <laughs> game. I got to put Justin Jefferson in there. He's 8,800, and I'm sure he'll be uh, catching some ownership, rightly so. But even like last year, he was like his expected. T- he should have scored more touchdowns. I think he's gonna have a decent matchup against his Tampa Bay secondary. Uh, so if I'm project, you know, I like this game. I think it's gonna be high scoring in a dome. So yeah, give me Justin Jefferson, 8,800. Kramer. Well, I told you I wanted to get into the Chargers game. I definitely like Keenan Allen uh, again, seventy three hundred. He's healthy. The case against him generally is he's going to get hurt. He's healthy, and if you read between the lines down there in Chargers camp, I think the fantasy community's gotten a couple things wrong. One, I'm not sure Mike Williams is as close to Keenan Allen as like underdog ADP suggests, and two. As we were, we've been talking about Palmer is the clear number three ahead of the rookie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Keenan Allen could be like a thirty percent target share guy to to start the season um, if it's not a bunch of cheap shit to Eckler. If you believe the offense is going to be more downfield, I think Keenan Allen's going to be just destructive. So seventy three hundred Keenan Allen stacked with Raheem. Raheem Palmer's Mostert. interesting as as like a cheap dart throw as well. That's who that I game. double stacked with. Okay. Uh, if I was doing a Herbert, it, 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 hypothetically, <laughs> if I was doing a Herbert lineup, that's where I'd start the double. John, start. first receiver, what do we got? I'm uh, I'm hitting this game too, and I'm going uh, Tyree Kill. Yeah, um, eighty two hundred, spending up there, and uh, you know, I think everybody's like on the Waddle train, which is fine. I mean, I'm a I'm a big Waddle fan, but like, it's Tyree freaking Hill. Like, it's not yes. like he's just gonna be be like bad all of a sudden. Like, he's he's <laughs> I just uh, I love Tyreek and, and uh, I think he's he's a great play this week in this environment. I mean, uh, you you got Mostert in your lineup, but like between him and Tyreek and Waddle, like they're probably going to score like ninety five percent of the fantasy points this weekend, right? Like Durham Smythe is that like the other option? Oh, yeah. They really have no one else, and oh. I, I'm with you. I also have Tyreek Hill eighty two hundred dollars. I mean, if you remember the last time we saw the Chargers secondary, what was happening? Uh, they were just letting guys run past them. They, they're good now, in though. Jacksonville. <laughs> it's a uh, and obviously the Chargers can can keep up with the scoring. So again, game script wise, I'm you know Tua knows judo now, so you expect him to oh, be able yeah, to right. make it through the entire judo, game. Though. It's huge. But yeah, eighty two hundred. I'm with you. So uh, that that was kind of my strategy: go cheap on quarterback, load up with some uh, some true uh, Ferraris here, Ryan, with Tyree Kill, Justin Jefferson. What about you, Kramer? Ferrari, uh, not probably wouldn't consider himself a Ferrari, but I, you know, in my my book, he's the guy who I would circle most likely to remove his D A W G tag and take on that D O G tag oh. this year. George Pickens five thousand stacks it. nicely with Kenny Pickett, and I, and I, you know, I think that I think the matchup that the Steelers should look to exploit is is the secondary of the Niners. We saw them kind of struggle last year, and I, again, I think, you know, you can say D'Amico Ryan's won't matter, and you can like uh, Wilkes coming in as a leader of men, but D'Amico Ryan's was a good coordinator, and so I, again, I I would attack the weakness. It's the secondary. George Pickens five thousand, nice. Uh, I'm I am doubling here, so just be forewarned. Look out. 
but, I, but, but I did apply a formula of getting different, applying that product ownership. Like John, John what's, your, what's your take? Uh, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson. And, and do you like either of them this week? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I have, uh, I, I like everyone this week. I, I feel like, just, you know, the, the, it's, yeah, the, know, it's the world is our oyster, so right? Hype. The yes. world is our oyster. You we can build wrong. everything we want. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh no, I love Pickens. I love Pickens. I think he is like a preseason darling. He's just was every time he played, he had a oh. one handed sweet highlight and then a couple of the more in practice. And I mean, you, how can you not love load him up with Pickett and, and let it ride? He knows. One hundred percent. He knows. Who's your? He's gonna be a dog. <laughs> Not like all those dogs on the Eagles. Who's your next receiver? So I went uh, to stack up with Richardson. I actually, I'm doing a single stack. Uh, I think with the running quarterbacks, you can kind of get away with that a little bit more, especially with a pretty volatile rookie first week started running quarterback. <laughs> uh, we're going with Alec Pierce at only thirty eight hundred bucks, um, and I think. I think, you know, I, I've been a big Alec Pierce guy in best ball. And I think when, you know, if, if this is maybe a risky bet on Richardson, then let's not tie up too much salary with the stack, right? And let's just have, you know, hopefully he brings a cheap guy along with him. Um, and then we can get some hits, you know, elsewhere with with some of the other salaries. So, yeah, I'm going Alec Pierce as my, as my spin down option. Yeah, no, I mean, thirty eight hundred dollars. Uh, I'm with you there, Pittman. It's like you're paying up, but I don't know if you get the. I mean, just watching him, I test. I would rather mm. do what you're doing, roll the dice with Alec Pierce at thirty eight hundred because you don't need. Yeah, you, know, you get one touchdown. You get you know one touchdown, three catches. You pay off that thirty eight hundred. Whereas like Pittman, you have to have like a pretty decent game, uh, for make for that to make sense at the price. Uh, for me, my third receiver is my stack, Chris Godwin, fifty nine hundred dollars. I mean, we saw that him and Baker had a bunch of chemistry, especially in that last preseason game, just racking up a bunch of PPR uh, targets. I, we'll see if Mike Evans plays. He's dealing with a little bit of injury. He's brought up this contract thing. I think so. I, I went deeper when we were we were okay. discussing it earlier. I do think that the groin injury is a, you're an old guy. You're just going to chill. He's healthy. Maybe it was contract related, but, but I don't think he's physically yeah. limited. But I, honestly, I think for me, at least the way I'm pe- playing this lineup, Evans playing, I think is good because maybe he plays and doesn't have an amazing game because he didn't get those game reps with Baker. And then people see Mike Evans back. They're like, all right, I'm going to get on Evans. It decreases the Godwin ownership. Uh, if if Evans is out, Godwin probably will catch some steam. Either way, I'm going to stay on him. But I think in a in a way, Evans playing almost helps this play. Assuming obviously he doesn't have a massive game and see all the targets. But I I, I like Chris Godwin at 5,900 bucks. I think he's going to get a lot of easy stuff. Oh no, I agree. I I have him in the lineup too. It, I I tried to be as different as possible from you, but uh, in this lineup, the fact that Evans is more expensive, I'd want to play Evans because he's more expensive. Yes. But uh, with this this game stack, and also I think just we saw it in the preseason. Baker's gonna look at him. Yeah, I mean he, this is a new Baker. He's gonna he's gonna lock in on his best receiver, rightly so. He's gonna get. I would think he's gonna get like twelve targets. This Again, is Baker's last What thing. do you think he's gonna do? <laughs> he's gonna go out there, pew pew, and just fucking and, full on gunslinger. And for anyone to secretly or, or surprisingly have a, a decent rushing game, like you don't see coming at all where maybe he runs in one or, or gets like breaks off a scramble for 20 yards. Like to your point, Ryan Baker is playing for his life. He, yeah. he is, this is the third year he started with a different NFL team week one. I think he Bruce sees Arians the writing is there. on the he's wall. He's like, yeah, man, you're the man. I loved you as a prospect. <laughs> he's, a, he's just full. He's just full self here. Yeah, yeah no, you are. They don't have a code on the on the building. He no. doesn't have to remember one, two, three, four anymore. <laughs> John, what do you got? Who's your third receiver? All right, so you know this is the sports gambling podcast network. Yes, I'm sure everybody listening here is, has you know put down a couple four or five team or parlays. We're gonna go first week back for the gambler himself, Calvin Ridley. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, as a bring back to the Colt stack, uh, and yeah, I think uh, I think he's in for a pretty big year, um, and I think he's at a pretty nice price point um, at sixty five hundred. I think it was, um, and yeah, I think the Jags are gonna 
keep keep uh, the momentum going from last year and have a pretty good offense. Well, they're certainly going to look good week one because the Colts don't look ever look good week one. Yeah, unfortunately, they've, they've, won, for, for they've what loss or they not have, won. Yeah, you got to use the right word. Not they, won like what ten year ten they, years in a row or something. They have or? not won since twenty fourteen. Yeah, that is a horrible streak to start. <laughs> it's comical. And Jim Irsay has nothing to do with it. I'm and sure. they got a bunch of good looks with Ridley. Yeah, I, I mean, I could definitely see it. And I think also having Ridley and not Trevor Lawrence certainly probably helps differentiate you. And then obviously having Anthony Richardson on the other side. All right. We got a couple more positions left uh, before we get to that. Shout out to underdog fantasy. If you haven't signed up with underdog fantasy. What are you waiting for? Still time to get in best ball mania Four. your chance to win $15 million in prizes, $3 million to first place. I've been loving these uh, NFL pick comes. I've just been firing away left and right. Very easy. You just look at the, uh, you know, player stats You go higher, and lower, you, you pick three players. You can win uh six X, AKA plus 600. I uh, just crafted another one uh, here. Uh, Baker Mayfield over two thirty three and a half passing yards. Cause of course I'm in on Baker this week. Uh, Damian Pierce over 51 and a half rushing yards. Uh, Baltimore is a tough defense, but that, that number feels so low for a guy who I think is going to get the uh, the vast majority of the workload. And then Mark Andrews under four and a half receptions. He's a little banged up uh, a lot of competition uh, in the passing uh, sector there for the Ravens. So that's what I'm going with. Uh, one of many NFL pick I'm firing week one. Use a promo code uh, SGPN 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Oh, I was thinking about crafting a hires only uh, <laughs> while we're flying to Vegas. Oh, yeah. Version. Well, John, you're gonna love this one, and I'd love the uh, I'd love the Packer insider take. But I've just been I've been pounding the table for Luke Musgrave all yes. season. Twenty nine hundred dollars. He is the red zone option, nice. uh, according to my sources. The dude is he's athletic. He's a freak. Yes, he's a rookie, but his comp he he doesn't have to compete with anyone. It's just another rookie. Luke Musgrave twenty nine hundred dollars. That's a I mean. Your Packers guy, what's your take yeah, on Musgrave? I am all aboard Luke Musgrave. I again, I I like built my little cash like dummy lineup just because I start entered into the different shit at the beginning of the week, and I just locked in Luke Musgrave there at twenty nine hundred because I'm like, <laughs> you know, why the hell not? There's really <laughs> nobody else. Like it's like Austin Hooper down there, and like other yeah. pros that are like not gonna see the field, and and on top of that, you know. I get, you know, we get so locked into draft of this best ball and you don't see the rookies faces ever on the, on the app. <laughs> and then Luke Musgrave shows up here week one on DraftKings. Dude's got a sweet stash. I yeah. didn't even yes. really factor that into my model no. at all, but you gotta love that. Uh, and if uh, I'll send uh, producer Josh, the photo of Luke Musgrave, uh, because Luke Musgrave, right, he's, a, he's a beaver. dude. He's an Oregon <laughs> state guy. Of course he's got his. That this is a team that carries a chainsaw out on the it's field. Weed. I mean, he, come he, on. He looks like a guy who literally <laughs> they woke him up and said, "Picture days today, and you're late." <laughs> he, he, the the photo of Luke Musgrave is amazing. If you, I, you you gotta have a guy like Musgrave in your lineup. The the sub, yeah, the the guy who's not catching any ownership, sub three thousand. You got you gotta hit on a couple of those guys. For me, it's Luke Musgrave and Kenny Gainwell to really bust these things open. Oh man, look at that! That's an amazing photo. Oh wow! I mean, he, <laughs> he does look a little like he's not that into picture day. <laughs> no, <Is> that, yeah. <laughs> he's thinking about scoring touchdowns. Oh, he's thinking about chainsaws. He's like, well, they don't let us have chainsaws here in in, in Lambo. That's bullshit. Kramer, what do you got? Who's your tight end? I'm oh. interested here. Oh, it's I the so I. I guess it will be chalky, but I game stacked Minnesota as well, and I went T.J. Hawkinson. Mm. Give me a little uh, get Got off that get ear off infection the, done. Why? Well, I, I mean, again, curious to hear John's take, but the the yeah the questionable tag for the ear infection mixed with the fact that I think at both Addison and Jefferson could catch some ownership, and and even Madison's lingering around as a guy that can take people off him on Minnesota. So yeah. To game stack Godwin and Hawkinson, two guys that com could command double digit targets uh, for under 12K plus EV move, Sean. So, yeah, give me TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I believe the price was 5,900. I just accidentally uh, 
I just realized I created a shitload of lineups and didn't actually enter them. Yeah. Uh, so I was I was rapidly sitting here and joining as we're going. But yeah, TJ Hawkinson fifty nine hundred with the Q tag. As no, no, John he's interesting. It. I mean, for me, him and him and Goddard and maybe Higby are the only guys I'm paying up for tight end. Uh, Cause well, Mark see, Andrews, Hig- the injury stuff, Kittle, the injury stuff. So it'll be, see, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think Higby's the cash guy this week. I was hearing John talk about he he probably will. Cash yeah, He's probably not a good GPP play H- Higby, but also, and I don't, maybe I don't want to spoil it. If, if John's about to talk about it, but Cole Turner for the Washington commanders, I mean, Arizona is like, I know it's a new defense and everything, but they, they've kind of had a history of a franchise of not defending the tight end. Uh, so that that's another interesting one. Anyway, so yeah, T.J. Hawkinson, kind of premium too. So I I can't imagine he'll he'll be very popular when you can look at how some of the value plays at the tight end position. Yeah, who do, who do you like at a uh, tight end this week? Uh, uh, who who do you got in your lineup here, John? Yeah, so I went with Gerald Everett, forty three hundred, um, and I think that is a little bit of a game stack action with Tyree Kill. I think tight ends in general are one of the positions that you want to try and correlate as best as possible, whether it's with your QB or in some sort of secondary deal, because I mean, basically at tight end, you're just kind of trying to bet on touchdowns. Um, And so, yeah, I think Gerald Everett is an interesting play. I mean, he's, you know, wasn't super popular all summer, no, no crazy news on him, no crazy highlights or anything, but with this game projected to be pretty popular, I'd expect that. Herbert Stacks, I'd expect, um, you know, Eckler, all those guys are going to be pretty popular. And so Everett could uh, go a little bit overlooked here. Good leverage off of uh, Donald Parham, too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, all the sharps will be all over Parham. Yeah. Uh, I have two different lineups with uh, Donald Parham in there. So I got to I gotta rework I, that shit. I don't know if you have a take, but um, what is your. You, you're playing Richardson, but. Uh, do you have any take on the Colts tight end situation? Cause that seemed pretty wide open to me. Obviously Mo Alley Cox, yeah. uh, they got a couple other guys. They're all priced. I think pretty much uh, at the stone minimum, if I'm, if I'm uh, not mistaken, but any thoughts on the Colts tight end uh, or yeah. sorry, Granson Granson is the guy Granson, I think. Right. And then yeah. Jelani woods is on IR to start the season. I don't know. My take is like when you've got three tight ends, you don't have any. So I just probably kind of right. Stick with. Yeah, not worth trying to. Mo Alley Cox, there, right? though, when you see him in the preseason, he's so <laughs> fucking big. Yeah, he's just so I mean, he Drake coming off the bus. Oh, how has that not worked? Oh, Unbelievable. I, I was buying into some uh, Nick, need- Nick Foles to uh, Mo Alley Cox. They're gonna go on a run here because they both played basketball, right? That's Mo, that's just good. Mo Alley Cox needs to get picked up by the Falcons. Okay. I feel like he'd fit in there. Bunch yeah. of big dudes, just big guys live. who don't produce. That's that's the Falcons. <laughs> Uh, for oh, and I I did get a uh, I I was um, I was chirping on the old uh, X dot oh, no. com. Well, the, everyone was mad that the uh, Atlanta beat reporter said that Kyle Pitts was going to be fourth in uh, targets for the Falcons, and of course our good friend Dalton Cates is like, no way, that's crazy, blah blah blah. So I said, all right, I'll take it. Oh <laughs> yes, I'll take it. Uh, Kyle Pitts not to be top three targets. I don't know how we're gonna get there. He tried to put in an injury clause. I said no way. Injury clause. Yeah, he's like he has to play eleven games. I'm like fuck I'm, you. At this point, I would take Jonu Smith heads up against <laughs> Kyle Pitts and targets. <laughs> yeah, I I so I'm on. Uh, you know, I'm under on board. the underdog it folks is, agree I with you. I should have went. I should have went catches because that seems to be the issue. People can't throw to uh, throw to catch him. But, but oh come on, throw but, him catchable balls. But he was. I mean, he's he was going in the eighth round when I did my last. Uh, oh really? Mania team. So people I think seem to be uh, public uh, is probably in with those. There are a couple. Reporters. There are a couple Kyle Pitts guys oh. in the foxhole. I I was just busy uh, clearing the Trey Lance foxholes. <laughs> Uh, haven't still haven't heard from <laughs> still haven't heard from that guy who bet me fifty dollars. Oh. He would be QB two. Sure. What, a, what a random ass bet! <laughs> and I said I don't want your money. Donate it to Eagles Autism Fund. Still haven't heard from him. And I know he hasn't been on Twitter because his profile still says Brock Purdy Trey Lance gang in his t- <laughs> Twitter profile. What a sad uh. thing to put on your Twitter profile. <laughs> We are repping the back of that was taking a stand. <laughs> You're repping the back of quarterback uh, that hard. I mean, John, get Sean Clifford in your Twitter bio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on, what are you doing? I don't, I don't have Hertz Mariota in my Twitter profile. Well, it's, is it is did Mariota is he still there? He's technically the second quarterback. I mean, oh. if anything, I'll go Hertz Tanner McKee because Mariota looks like shit. 
All right. Uh, for me, my flex spot again, game stack. I had Tyree kill Cohen back with the big dog himself, not Derrick Henry. Another big dog though. Mike Williams, $5,700 first game of the season. He's healthy. 5,700 feels like a great price. I understand that the take on Keenan Allen as well, but um, now I'll, I'll go, uh, you know, Keenan Allen, $1,600 more. Mike Williams fit my lineup. I like the situation against uh, Miami's uh, cornerbacks, a very, very big physical guy, tough, tough to guard. So yeah, give me Mike Williams, 5,700. Kramer. Oh, well, so double stack alert. Kenny Pickett with George Pickens with. If you keep track of the preseason reports, the most interesting thing is the snap reports of like which receivers played with yeah. which units. Allen Robinson basically played 100% of the time with the starters. All right, let's zoom in. Oh, wow. I San Francisco this. 49ers know how to defend a tight end. But you know what they struggled at last year? Defending the slot. Where Allen Robinson appears like he's going to be operating, <laughs> and it seems like he's almost certainly in the red zone package, potentially even like as a two receiver set. So uh, this is shocking. Maybe he woke up. Uh, maybe he realized he went back to to state college and ha- enjoyed some uh, some some good Kramery. fortunes and re- yeah, checked so out checked out the Quiznos. He, used he to was Kramery, at. or he had some. Who knows. But he he realized he needed to get good at football again and try. So uh, here here's the effort. Thirty seven hundred. I you know touchdowns live. That's what you're playing for here. And no. everything. It seems like he's going to be on the field in the red zone with this team. So uh, let's go, Allen Robinson the second. He I guess he fought hard to get that two next to his name here on DraftKings. Thirty seven hundred. That's my. That's the million dollar play. No, no. I, I think that's a perfect GPP play. He's a Thank guy you. who's oh, super was... cheap. Gonna gonna be out there. Gonna get the snaps. Well, Bowser would tell you that the, the GPP play is Calvin Austin. Yeah. See, I don't know. I uh, it's not <laughs> early in the season. Yeah. I don't He's know. got the three next to his name, so maybe that's later. That's no. The, that's I mean, the third in the movie. Guys, me, start with the old guys in week one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> the old go. vets. It, it yeah, Allen Robinson. It's his job to lose. Now there's a decent chance he will lose it, but uh, you know if Calvin Austin's making a run, I think he'll maybe see some. But they're like an eleven personnel team. I I think, I think to your point, Ryan, Allen Robinson's going to see a shit ton of snaps, and at thirty seven hundred, that's that's how you win some money. Uh, John, flex play. Yeah, so my flex play, I'm going a third running back, um, and we're going with six thousand for Ken Walker uh, oh. against the Rams, and I Dog. think. Uh, I just, you know, the Rams are bad, man. And, and, <laughs> yes. uh, and they're, I, you know, they're like stoked about how they're like holding up in preseason against third stringers. It's, or, or it's <laughs> like, I don't know, man. You guys are just bad. So I think Kenneth Walker is just going to run all over them. I mean, you can't really trust anything Pete Carroll says about any of these guys' injury status. So it's hard to tell what's going on with uh, Charbonnet and Walker. Uh, I could, you know, get slapped in the face tomorrow with like a, DMP practice for Walker, but as of now, I think he's going and healthy as the lead back and uh, should run all over the Rams. I will say, I if there's one thing I conspiracy theory me believes about the various draft platforms is that the guys drafting in the FFPC main event, like some of those guys, have sources. Hundred percent, I believe that, <laughs> and I think this is one of the areas like Charbonnet going much later than an underdog, Ken, Ken Walker yeah. going much earlier. So I think to kind of echo what John's saying, I, I think you know Pete Carroll might have been fucking around with you all this off season, like he he seems to like to do, uh, and and you know Charbonnet I think gets involved, but to to John the old guys first. I like that. This is actually a great week one strategy. We got to remember. Yeah. I'm gonna write it down for next year. Old guys. Except Luke Musgrave, Luke Musgrave, <laughs> old guys uh, and Luke Musgrave. He's got a mustache. He already figured that out. He's old enough. Yes. Uh, oh man. All right. Closing it out with the defense. Everyone's favorite part of the show. Now defense in general, uh, I, I think you, you listen to the hardcore guys. You cannot correlate or predict uh, blah, blah, blah. in general. 
Um, <laughs> John, like my prediction, am I? Uh, you my, see, you want you want to pick a defense that's going to score more points. But. I mean, so we're just supposed to uh, be able to project defense, even though uh, years of data have shown you no ability to project defenses at all. But sure, you are going to figure out defenses. All right, well, we got to get kicker tiers up on the website. Uh, God bless. At least they don't have kickers in DraftKings. Here's what I got. <laughs> I usually just kind of lean towards home defenses or cheap defenses. For me, I had enough to spend up on this defense, a defense I really love, a defense that has TJ Watt played, oh, wow. a defense that's going up against Brock Purdy. I mean, we saw what uh, Hassan Reddick did to uh, Brock Purdy last time he stepped out on the field. Now, I, I I would never wish injury on anyone. No, but I think this 49ers offensive line may have trouble with the Steelers pass rush. I think they have the ability to create some turnovers, especially at home here. Three thousand dollars. Give me the Steelers defense. I, I think they're I think they're going to create some turnovers for Brock Purdy. Beautiful. Especially without Kittle there helping chip on a guy like uh TJ Watt. I I that you know, they they they'll they'd love to jam it down your throat when he's healthy, but Kittle a great blocker. No, he is. <laughs> it, hats off to him. Oh God! God help us all if Brock Purdy comes if out. Brock Looks like Purdy. hot shit. <laughs> if Brock oh, Purdy, oh fuck me! I got one fifty to one. A Sam Darnold oh. uh, ticket is hilarious. Yeah, Ryan, you'll oh, be chopping at the be, bit. I don't even want to tout that. It's almost embarrassing at this point. Like <laughs> I don't. I'd rather the Niners not be good than I win that ridiculous Sam Darnold bet. All right. <laughs> we have a long. <laughs> don't worry about that, Ryan. I, uh, I think we have a now, plenty of time to sweat that out. Now let, let's uh, let's real quick handicap because the other riveting market that I have Sam Darnold at one hundred to one is comeback player of the year. Can Sam Darnold coming back <laughs> from sucking overcome John Mechie returning from cancer and Demar Hamlin returning from death? Pro- unlikely, no. <laughs> unlikely sucking will trump either Unlike of those cases. <laughs> All right, defense. Uh, I I spoke about him earlier when we were discussing Aaron Jones, but the Packers. I love them as a a like obvious pivot off of the Commanders. So I think I you know defense tends to to you say you say it's going to be spread out. I would imagine in defense that's that's not not always the case, and and imagine. If you're at all paying attention to anything, you're clicking on the commanders at that cheap yeah. price. So Packers at 2,800. Justin Fields uh, saw some guy with some graphs pointing out that maybe Justin Fields is never going to get there. Which oh, I warned, <laughs> I replied to him and said, "Hey man, be careful. These Bears fans are pretty serious." But man, he, I mean, it's still Justin Fields, and it's still they're going to let him pass more, Sean. They're going to, and, and I think the Packer is one of our handicaps with the divisional preview stuff was. Hey man, this Packers roster is so much better than the Bears, and and where it stands out is on the defensive side of the ball. So yeah, I'd lo- I love this Packers twenty eight hundred against the Bears team that they've owned e- with or without Aaron Rodgers. I'll make that prediction. Doesn't matter. Hmm. Two and zero. Oh I think year. the ownership trans will transfer QBs. I think yeah, it'll transfer. All right. Who do you got, John? <laughs> Close it out. Who's your defense this week? I'm going. Uh... I'm scrolling down to the bottom and I'm just rolling with the Raiders here against the Broncos. Oh, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't really think the Raiders are very good, but I know the Broncos are not good. (laughs) So I think, uh, I think Max Crosby getting the Russell hustle and bustle in week one, just get a couple sacks. Maybe we have a pick or two and uh, 2,300 bucks, basically the minimum. I think it's a pretty good option. That's like how, that's how you start the season, right? You kind of like scroll down to the bottom. You're like, all right, Who's like got the sketchiest matchup coming up, right? And like Denver was pretty sketchy and pretty low on the total pool, so I took it. Well, and it pairs very nicely with the Josh Jacobs because that Denver team has had oh, yeah. some issues against the run. Yeah, I, I mean, I love Faden Russell Wilson with a super cheap defense because yeah, there's a number of ways they can turn it over. Uh, it's a division game. It's the first game of the season, so the Raiders. Probably don't know they suck yet. They're going to be playing hard. Uh, and again, like points, like points allowed aren't a huge thing as much as no, sacks, creating sacks. So you can you can have a defense that loses, but if you know if the other team's passing a bunch, they're creating a couple turnovers. They're getting some sacks. It, it can pay off. I so. got some intel. I yes. was going to save it for the pick show, but oh right, uh, sports talk. So guy listening to sports talk radio in the Denver area. That's that's the source. 
apparently there's a guy who called in suggesting that he knows that Sean Payton has been given the green light to railroad Russ. Dude, I've been make saying him look, sit him the make him look so season. bad that the public, that the whole entire <laughs> fan base will want him out, allowing for it to happen seamlessly. So I uh, mean, setup obviously could be a crazy sports talk caller, or could be a completely rational guy with in- intelligence we should listen to. So I love the yeah. I, I think the Raiders. I I would say the, of the I have sixteen DFS lineups so far. I have got a couple more to go before we fly out tomorrow yes. morning. I would say the Raiders is the rate. I have the Raiders probably in a quarter of those. It's, I mean, how do you not play? You saw that offensive line comical. I mean, they were tracking pressures in the preseason and, and the, I, I think I saw the bro the Broncos somehow the, the starters were worse than the second string, I know. but the second, the, the, they were the two worst units in football. Uh, I, again, they were struggling with the Cardinals. I understand mm. it's preseason. I understand all that, but just eye test that, that offense did not look fixed. All right. In any way, we did it. We we spent way too much time talking about defenses. That's why it's everyone's favorite segment, <laughs> the National Football <laughs> League. Football. What do you want us to do? Football is it's back. here. Hey, we're gonna be uh, in Las Vegas rest oh, of the week. Yes. Uh, our show tomorrow night, Tuesday night, College Football Week Two Picks podcast. Uh, bumping the uh, time back a little bit, so look for us nine thirty p.m. Pacific. Again, subscribe youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Get in on the NFL free roll football contest. Uh, free to enter, download it or get the link there in the SGPN app. Giving away thousands of dollars and maybe the autographed uh, sports gambling podcast helmet. Big thanks to uh, John Jackson calling in. John's going to be doing, uh, bringing back the flow chart, going to be talking about that as well uh, pew, pew, on pew. the podcast network. Uh, so if you've never seen John's flow chart, very fun. Oh. It's like a choose your own adventure for DFS uh, degenerates. It, it very, simplifies very it for th- think whatever you're thinking. It might sound complex. It's not complex. No. It's not a complex flow chart. It actually makes right. it easy for if you. If you think flow chart ma- like oh is this going to be like my office job? No, it's the exact opposite. He, he this gives guy's you a- trying to give us a fucking PowerPoint. <laughs> no, he, 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 he lays out like a good path. Hey, do you want this play? Or do you want yeah. this play? Okay, if you like this, go here. Yeah. And then okay, now you got these right. options. Literally, uh, for you know, for the the level that you're at, whoever's listening, I don't want to say dummies. No, because very... our listeners aren't dummies. No, but if you were, all. if you do relate with a dummy, mm. you would be able to read the flow chart. Sh- a- as good a PhD, yes, Every, everyone. And follow John on, on X at John Boy Beats. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling uh, podcast, Sean, Sean. It does seem like we're still maybe the only ones using X. It, it throws people off every time. It does. It does. <laughs> does. You, you I'm a Twitter call for lifer. Yeah. I, I, hey, it's uh, no longer Twitter. It's X. Give it. Uh, yeah. I I have plenty of other times where I sound like the old man. I'm getting ahead of the X. I'm getting in on it. Or maybe calling it X is probably an old guy thing. For the sports gaming podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green. He's Ryan. Yeah, Robert Sala should have mentioned it was the Twitter bird, not a crow on that Eagles back. Kramer, let it ride.